Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Choi, board certified periodontist since 2011, and today we're diving deep into sinus lift procedures and zirconia implants with a real patient case study. If you've been researching sinus lifts or considering a zirconia implant as a more holistic alternative to titanium, this video is exactly what you need to see. I'm going to show you a why and how I do lateral window sinus lift procedures from start to finish, including why we chose a zirconia implant for this particular patient who wanted a metal-free approach. You'll see the actual panoramic x-rays, 3D scans, and before and after images from the case, plus a detailed animation that breaks down exactly what happens during a sinus lift. We'll cover why this patient's soft bone required us to perform an immediate sinus lift and how the zirconia implant provided the perfect holistic solution she was looking for. So if you're interested in learning about sinus lifts, zirconia implants, or both, Hit that like button and let's get started. All right, so let me show you um, our patient's panoramic x-ray. And so this was um, before the surgery, um, but this patient's tooth we took out, we did extraction of socket preservation um, back about a year prior to this re recent surgery. But anyways, um, when we took this tooth out, um, patient has like pretty soft bone based off of our 3D scans that we saw of her. So, um, the reason why the bone looks like this even after a year was that we actually used a combination of human, sterile human bone, and which we call allograft, and we also used um, xenograft, in this case specifically cow bone, bovine bone. And so basically what I wanted to do then also was I measured this with our 3D scan, um, and the reason why this is super important is I can actually get measurements of how much bone she has um, before we hit the sinus. And one of the reasons why we're worried about going into um, the sinus is not necessarily that placing an implant in the sinus is an issue, but the reason why it could potentially be an issue is we want to make sure that when we place this implant, we have enough vertical height um, of this implant. Meaning, um, if we're going to bury a pole in the ground, we want to make sure that uh, enough of that pole is buried in that ground um, so it gets enough support, right? So if I was to put up a mailbox post, you don't want to bury it in six inches of soil or concrete. You want to probably put it maybe like you know, a foot and a half or two feet um, buried in the sole. So similarly, when we place a dental implant, um, we want to make sure that it's buried in bone um, and not just in air, which is what the sinus is, just an empty hollow air cavity. So looking at the CBCT, we were able to see that we only had seven millimeters, which is not that bad, but you know, we have good width here also of the jawbone. Um, let's see how wide it is. So yeah, we could put like a wide platform implant in here. But what I discovered was that when I was drilling up into this jawbone, the jawbone was just very soft. So I had to basically pivot and immediately do what we call a lateral window sinus lift. And so what that meant was that this outer edge right here is what we call the buckle side. And what I did was I had already made an incision right here, um, right on the gums, lifted up the gums uh, on both sides. And, um, what that allowed me to do was just lift the gum a little higher and easily access right here to create a window so that I can go ahead and um, basically lift up the Schneiderian membrane. So what I want to do real quick is I actually want to show you an animation of what that looks like. So I'm actually going to show you this animation from um, this company called Geichlich, which um, provides membranes and bone grafting. This is the bone that I personally like. Um, just because it has great bone density whenever you do this. But if you look at this 3D scan here real quick, you could see that, you know, what they're showing you is how much bone that we want this implant buried in. But if you take a look at this, we definitely do not have enough bone, right? This would be the amount of bone. And just keep in mind, this is all the empty sinus cavity that we were talking about earlier. And that right here is basically the same view of the animation that you're, sh you're seeing right now. But anyways, let's go back to showing uh, what we were talking about. Again, this is native bone. This is all aerospace. And so what I talked about earlier is that we are going to create a little window right here um, and a window through this bone. That's, again, called the lateral window through this buckle wall. Um, this right here is what they call a Schneiderian membrane. We are going to use special instrumentation to lift that up gently. Um, we tell people it is like a... Um, wet tissue type of like member uh, membrane that that's what the consistency is so we got to be super careful not to tear that um, that's one of the hardest things about the sinus lifting procedure is not to tear this membrane 
And then after we lift that up, we then go ahead and we add all that bone. And then we can put a membrane on top. So I think a lot of people do skip this step. You don't need to actually put a collagen membrane here whenever you're lifting this membrane. But anyways, um, yeah, that's basically how you do a sinus lift. And I just wanted to show you guys that with an easy to understand animation. So going back to this case, just because this patient had really soft bone, um, I didn't feel that we were gonna get enough stability for that implant with just seven millimeters height of bone. So what I recommended for her during the middle of the procedure um, is that we just go ahead and do a lateral window sinus lift at that time. So let me show you what that looks like after. So here's what it looks like afterwards. Um, and you could see all this added bone right here. Um, I again use a combination of the bovine bone and also um, human bone. And this right here is a zirconia implant because this patient wanted a more holistic approach versus a titanium implant. And this again is the sagittal section view that we showed you earlier. And what you're looking at is this is the area that we had created the access and we go, went ahead and we added all this bone after lifting up the membrane. And then we were able to go ahead and place this implant right here for her. So <clears throat> anytime we do a sinus lift, I prefer like to wait um, five, six months um, before we go ahead and we start loading this implant. And so, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. That's basically how we do this procedure. Um, again, that was the before and after this procedure. And um, that's just showing how sometimes a zirconia implant, even if we decide to go ahead with that or a titanium implant, we just want to make sure that we have enough height to bury this implant and to make sure that this patient is going to have long-term stability of that implant and future tooth.